Welcome back to Marta from Sparta. In today's episode, we're gonna do something different. We will make this amazing textured art. It will be my first time to try something like that as well. So I will learn as I go and I will share my tips and experience during the process with you. Price for this type of art is various. It depends from the canvas size and difficulty level and obviously from the artist. Uh, you can buy very small pieces for $59 and a little bit larger pieces starting from $500 is up and up. And again, it varies from the size and difficulty level and obviously from the artist. So I saw this type of art multiple times in home goods, uh, my favorite place to be, but in very small and simple designs, uh, very, very contemporary, which my house is, but that wasn't really something which I was looking for my space. And then uh, we went to Poland for the vacation. We visited Polish mountain Zakopane. And I saw these gorgeous pieces hanging in our hotel for sale. And of course, prices were as high as the mountains on the paintings. So um, as much as beautiful they were, but first of all, transportation issues. Second of all, price tags on them. So I thought that could be a fun project to do when I come home. My husband and I, we are both very outdoorsy people. We love woods and mountains and hiking and biking and walks and all animals and just being in the woods and in the nature. So I decided to attempt to make something like I saw in Zakopane, but in colors which are more uh, my style, which will go with our interiors. So this video and this piece of art is especially dedicated to my dear husband. So here we go. Let's get started. Let's get messy and let's figure it out how to make it. Because we were planning to get rid of um, this huge uh, canvas, so I am actually very happy that we hold off to it. Uh, recently also we completed office and my YouTube studio renovation. So I am planning to use only leftovers from my house remodeling project, which is a uh, leftover spackle and a ceiling paint. So my project cost was zero dollars as everything I, uh, I had already at home. And that was leftovers from past projects which will potentially go to waste if we wouldn't use it soon. So I just finished putting a first layer of paint on the canvas and hopefully one, uh, one coat will, will be enough. I don't need like a full perfect coverage because I'm gonna add color to it anyway. I just wanted to cover black because my project should be uh, very in the beige, grayish area, very light. Uh, so it's drying. I turned the fireplace on so it's super warm here because I am super excited to do the next step and I can't wait to paint to dry so I'm gonna leave it for an hour and check on it and I'm gonna see how it's drying if it's gonna crack because I put pretty thick coat on it also it's fine because texture 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 that's what I'm going for so I will check on it in one hour and let's see Originally, I was planning to do shades of gray, uh, but I decided in last minute to go with the earth colors to add some warmth to the room uh, since everything is black, white and gray. Again, I would like to highlight that, highlight that I have zero experience in texture painting. It will be my first time. Uh, I am trying it, so we will see as we go. Um, I watched a few YouTube videos uh, to get general idea how to approach it. I am also not using appropriate plaster, painting plaster, which is made for texture painting, but I'm using home spackle, 
so potentially that also increases difficulty level for me as plaster is already made for this specific purpose but I am willing to explore uh, new corners of art and um, try something unconventional. The reason why I'm, I am using home plaster is obviously budget. Professional painters, they use painting plaster, which is very expensive and I would need a lot of it in order to make um, a size of wall art I am planning to. And if my first texture painting wouldn't work out, I would waste a lot of money. In my case, I think it will be win-win situation because I had old canvas to recycle and I'm gonna be using leftover spackle from the house project and the ceiling paint, which I already have also from house project. So the only potential loss I would face would be my time if this project wouldn't work. But also I would treat it as a learning experience I would love to explore new corners of art, so I would love to try the texture art. So again, no losses, just wins in my case, because in a worst case scenario, I will learn something new and I will buy professional <laughs> plaster if house spackle won't work. And I will try to approach the same art with a professional equipment and supply. I started with a top mountains as my plan was lightest on top and go darker toward the bottom so my first layer was plain coat of spackle on top of the canvas which are already primed with a ceiling paint. When I was moving toward the bottom, I was keep adding few drops of paint into the already pre-mixed spackle to the lightest color I mean. And then I was doing next level, next mountain and adding more paint to already pre-mixed spackle and so on and so on. Through the whole project I was using and mixing only two colors, black and brown. And again, I wanted to use same family of colors, so the only thing which I was doing, it was I was keep adding more drop of paint to the lightest level I did. And at the end I added a lot of black, so my last mountain will be very, very dark.
I was also playing with adding water to make a sparkle more running. I didn't really come up with a one consistency I really liked because I was changing sparkle consistency based on what I was currently doing. I used more runny consistency as a first layer to cover the shape of each mountain. And then I went thicker and thicker with consistency when I was creating peaks and ridges and trying to create a texture and rocks. And that's the part when I was actually exploring a little bit thicker consistency of spackle. I also used uh, cake decorating tips to be more precise where the ridges go and where exactly I want ridges to show and tiny trails on the mountains and I think the cake tips were very very helpful in this case. And because I was using um, cake tips I mixed Paco a little bit uh, looser in consistency so it's easier to push through the tip and create ridges really easy. So before I actually start to put a spackle using the cake tips um, on the ridges I sketch them with a pencil first, so then I just went over them. Uh, I fill up the plastic bag with a little bit looser spackle and I put a cake tip in there and I just went over what I already sketched. I used a tiny palette knife to actually to go over the ridges and create little bit lines and texture and then when I noticed that this is not enough of um, texture and I want more dimensional um, uh, ridges then I will keep adding more spackle uh, using the cake tips. To make a ridges I chose one consistent color which will stand out on all mountains as each mountain was done in different colors 
but after I did them all I was really unhappy with my choice I really didn't like the color of the ridges so you will see uh, later how it's gonna look and no worries I figured it out how to correct this because it was too far in the process to start uh, all over again so I came up with idea uh, how to fix what I didn't like but before I decided to correct uh, the color of uh, uh, ridges I put on my mountains I run gently with a sponge and uh, tap it everywhere where ridges uh, were originally done and I wanted to create like this kind of like a rocky texture uh, which you see on the mountains so let's go back to the color of the ridges which I didn't like so in order to fix it, I decided to mix a little bit of brown and black and create like a water, like a dirty water using only black and brown color. And what I did, I just took a very white paintbrush and ran over ridges first. Then I wait for them to dry and I then run over the whole painting. So that actually solved my problem and I was so happy to move to another step and I was super super happy how it came out and the fact that I was actually able to save it and I was thinking about how to create more texture and get to the point which I imagine in my head. So once I was able to get rid of this very vivid browns and pastels uh, I was so excited and I was thinking how I can actually make it less flat, but more alive. I didn't want to really introduce more colors as uh, I wanted to go with really neutral um, theme. So I came up with idea using gold. I thought that the gold will be perfect a touch for this neutral color mountains to make them look alive so i painted a tiny sun which is peeking uh, through the clouds and then i took a very tiny brush and i was doing a gold touch-ups on the ridges and on the pieces of art which are sticking out the most i was trying to create like this illusion like the sun is hitting the rocks and and ridges and I wanted to show more of the texture I created originally as the texture wasn't really visible when the painting was flat and basically that was it half of gold made it look so alive and gorgeous and elegant and all my worries that this experiment with the texture painting and using house paco uh, won't work out just went away. Uh, I was so happy. I am very happy and I am very proud how this piece came out. And here we go. I hang the uh, art on the hallway on our way to my husband's office. And I was doing final touch-ups on the wall because I also think that once the uh, art is hanging where it's supposed to be, if the artist has um, opportunity to look at the space where his uh, piece of art will be hanging and do the final touch-ups, I think it's something which it's super cool. And I was able to do tiny touch-ups here and there when the art was hanging. I mount battery operated light and this is spark light which I purchased on Amazon I believe for $14 and I think it's a perfect spotlight made out of wood which is really cohesive with our space and it complements the art as well uh, so yes I couldn't be happier with this project I have to tell you this is multi-step project it will take you a couple of days so be prepared and some uh, frustration because it's not gonna always work the way you think it will and every layer has to be dry completely in order to go to the next step 
but this is the way how I did it because I had specific vision in my head. You don't have to do it the way I did it. There is multiple videos on YouTube which are way more simple, but I saw this gorgeous pieces in Zakopane and I really wanted to have something like that which gonna remind me first of all our trip and second of all uh, be more cohesive with my space. So I am planning to make another project like this, but more on beginner's level, also using house paint and a spackle, because I think this is super fun and elegant way to decorate your space. It came out even more beautiful than I originally imagined and more beautiful than I was planning to in my head. And currently it's hanging on the wall to my husband's office and um, I install beautiful spotlight uh, above it, which is made out of wood. Uh, so it's gonna go nicely with the space and with the feel of this whole painting. And this painting is dedicated to the love of my life and the biggest rock in my life. And hey, if you have expensive taste like me and you want to keep your bank account happy as well, this is the right place for you. Thank you for watching. I will see you next week.